Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Susan Erickson. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it really does mean a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I'm a transformational coach and trainer and I can assist you on your, uh, on to help you heal your past, create your future and transform your present. So you can take charge of your destiny in the here and now. I am the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, uh, guided meditation and angel oracle cards to assist you if you feel lost and want to get clear on your reason for being here. And I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes and a six week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence to take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey, a mini guide meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Susan Erickson, about the language of you. Now, one of the most effective leadership developers, consultants, and transformational mindset coaching experts, Susan Erickson is a tour de force with many successful shows and presentations, and a mentor to professionals of all walks of life. Susan's journey to excellence is powered with a driving passion for empowering people. Susan's gift and passion for developing the potential in others and teach them how to act on it has allowed her to grow her career and perform to audiences worldwide. Susan works with multiple leaders to assist them in developing their leadership skills and overcoming limited mindsets. Susan shows each audience how to reject limited mindsets and belief patterns and reconnect with what matters most so they can achieve any result all the while enjoying their most abundant life. Now, with testimonials such as, Susan coached me through a couple of challenges I was facing that I felt overwhelmed with. She provides comfort and clarity just when you think you are in over your head. She coached me to prioritize what I needed. And if, and if you're going through a transition of life, a new job, relationship, birth, death, etc., you need to talk to Susan. She can help make this transformation as smoothly as possible so you can adjust to your new normal. So without further delay, hello, Susan, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Well, hello, Ray. Thank you so much. I'm great today. And thank you so much for inviting me here. I am uh, honored to be um, with you today on the show. I love to be with like-minded people, like-minded women in particular, as we grow and develop and live our most abundant lives. Absolutely perfect. And thank you so much for um, agreeing to be a guest on my show. Now, before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you ask questions, you can share this video, leave comments and thoughts live or on the replay, as both Susan and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Susan, why don't you tell us more about your journey and the language of you? Well, thank you so much for asking. And yes, yeah, so my journey really um, came through um, leadership and corporate America in healthcare, and then um, really stepping into full-time coaching because that's what I felt called to do. And that's what I, where I felt I had the best impact and the best ability to help people become their best selves. So, um, I believe mindset is really where it all starts, right? We have to have that mindset that we can do it. We know how to do it, um, that we have everything we need within us. And as a coach, I fully believe that, that I am a lighthouse, not a lifeboat. Um, so I'm not here to save people. I'm here to guide them to their best possible selves. I like that analogy lighthouse not a lifeboat i might be borrowing that for you <laughs> <laughs> please do please do borrow with pride that's what we do right um and so the language of you really is all around that as well because um in addition to um believing the right things having the right mindset overcoming any limiting beliefs that we have so limiting beliefs are things that maybe we heard as a child that we heard growing up or that we hear from society. 
um, things that we don't even sometimes realize are limiting for us, whether it's in the field of money, whether it's in the field of success, of a career. Um, I was just listening to something the other day of there's a whole new school um, on the West Coast for women to become uh, welders. And so this very traditional male field that now women are going into, um, how many times have we seen a woman welder or thought, oh, not really even imagined that. So it's really just being able to imagine even that things that we thought uh, we might or maybe even never thought of that we can do that those are available to us uh, it can it's often things around money right um, abundance mindset around money and when we talk about abundance we often jump right to money which is yeah. truly a piece of that but it's abundance in all areas of our life right we want abundance in our relationships we want abundance in our health we want abundance in our spirituality in our careers, we want abundance in all areas, and we absolutely can have that if we believe we have it and if we take action. So let's yeah, I, I, think, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, we believe we want, but we have to take action. Right. So I'm a big believer in manifesting and vision boards and um, having the vision of where we want to go and what we want to do and who we want to be and how we want to be, and then. But not only that, then we need to act on it, right? So that's what I help my clients with is um, where is it you want to go? Who is it you want to be? How is it you want to be? How is it you want to show up in a relationship? How is it you want to be in your career? And then what are the steps you need to take to get there? Um, so it's not about, oh, if only this person would do that or only if my boss did this, then I could do that. Those are really things out of your control. We never control other people. We control how we show up. So what if you showed up as that person that you wanted to be? You didn't wait for your boss to do something. You didn't wait for your spouse to take more action around the house. You didn't wait for your child to behave how you wanted them to behave. Um, you didn't wait until you had that particular degree or that particular amount of money. You didn't wait for that. Um, you did what you could at that moment in time with what you have. And so that's a lot about living authentically, which is living your true values, right? And if you're not living your values, the things that are truly important to you, that's going to show up in not being able to live abundantly. Um, you may be able to get to a certain um, area, a certain tier, um, a certain level of success, what you would consider success. And that's another one of those things like abundance. It's going to be different for each one of us, right? Yeah. So um, success for you and for me and for our neighbor, for our spouse, it might look different. But to get to whatever level of success that you want might change along the way as well. But you're only going to get it to a certain level if you're not truly living your values and maybe only in one area. Right. So maybe you're feeling you're in living your values in your home life, but not in your career or in your career and on your home life or what you do with your finances, but not what you do with your health or by, you know, what you do with your health, not what you do with your finances. So it's living your values in all of those areas, first identifying what those are and then making sure they're incorporated in all of those areas. So that's really living authentically and to live abundantly. I feel there's a there's a triangle that you have to live authentically, you have to live aligned with your values, and then you have to acknowledge and stand in the power that you already have within you. That is how you get to the top of abundance. So all of those things combine for that. And yeah. we're Yeah, no, um, but I, I suppose it's you know, it's it sounds great um when you sort of like say it, but you know, to a lot of people, actually putting that stuff into practice can be can be pretty difficult. Um, again, because of mindset, limited beliefs from 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 the past. So they're all going to have to change, aren't they, before you can actually do that? Well, that's interesting. What what you say because it is actually it is absolutely that it's a practice, right? So nobody is going to just have it happen in a day. It is a practice. 
<laughs> we, <laughs> it is the way we look at things. And sometimes you have an aha moment and that's great. And that's wonderful. And that's really what coaching, I love that when my clients, oh, I never thought about that. I never looked at it in that way, whatever. But guess what? You have to go out and do something with it then, right? You have to incorporate that into your practice. And so you have to live with those values and then you have to live aligned with your purpose. So the other, the other corner of that bottom piece of that triangle is living aligned with your purpose. It's living um, aligned with where you're supposed to be in life and what you're supposed to be doing in life. And often people get stuck with that. And sometimes I think we, we make it really hard, right? Like we're like, I'm searching for my purpose and we make it um, really difficult. Well, it's, oftentimes really simple. Not that it's not hard. It's still hard, but it can be very simple. It's as simple as what are the things you are good at? And you'll go, well, I'm not really good at very much. Some people will say that. And that's really a confidence thing. However, there are things that you enjoy doing. What are the things that you really enjoy doing, right? Um, maybe you really enjoy creative, artistic things, Maybe you really enjoy numbers. Maybe you really enjoy relationships and talking to others. Maybe you really enjoy outside and being in nature. It's one of the things you really enjoy. Maybe you really enjoy writing, um, but maybe you enjoy writing poetry and not books, right? So there's all different areas of that or, you know, um, pieces of that that go into that. And then what do people tell you that you're good at, right? So oftentimes we are blinded to our own, right? Our own things. So what is it that people tell you that you're good at that maybe you didn't even realize you were good at, right? Um, maybe it's something, maybe it's baseball and you can hit the ball or you can pitch, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's, um, I had a kind of an aha moment for, I, I'm not good at detail work for numbers, but I'm good at seeing um, analytically, like something might, where something's off or whatever. And I never realized that until I was um, helping my daughter set up a spreadsheet for her practice that she was opening. And I had said, I shared this. So I sent her this spreadsheet and I shared it with her and she was trying to figure out where something went. And I said, well, well just do this. And I don't and she's like, but you don't understand. My brain doesn't work like that. And I'm like, Oh, I just thought everybody's brain worked like that. Right. You think everybody gets it when you get it. And that's really not true. So listen to what other people tell you as well, because it may be something you're really good at that you think everybody really is really good at, but they would really benefit. And you can really help them by sharing that what you have and what you know, and what you're really good at that you didn't that you thought everybody else was too. So it's sometimes um, it's all of those things together, right? It's what you um, are good at it's what you enjoy doing and it's what others tell you that you're good at yeah and I think and I think sometimes we're we're frightened to ask other people aren't we you know mm. are, are, you know to your friends your family you know you know what am I good at um, and I think sometimes you're really frightened that especially well I suppose your family and that, that it's kind of like um, you, you know, other p members of the family were always better than you were at doing things. And you're kind of like, well, I don't want to ask them because they're always better at doing this than, 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 than me. Right. Especially siblings, right? We're, we're really that way with our siblings. Like, oh, they're so good at that. And, you know, we don't, we're often competitive with our siblings too. So it's like, you know, we don't want to admit that we maybe aren't as good at something as they are. So it's all of those things. But one of the best exercises that I think um, as a family or as a, a, a work group, a team of any kind is um, an exercise that I've done when I work with um, in groups and in, in, in teams, uh, work teams is to um, write just take a piece of paper and write the person's name at the top. And then each person writes something on there that they appreciate about that person or that that person is good at. And then they share that with them um, at the end. And so everybody has written on there. Maybe, maybe you do it at a holiday, right? Maybe you do it at Thanksgiving or something where everybody writes something on that paper that they appreciate about that other person. 
And that way you don't necessarily know who it is. You can probably tell the writing. I don't know, but maybe not, you know, so you don't, and it takes a, it removes a little bit of that emotion from it. Right. So people aren't right. having to speak it out loud and get all emotional about it. And yet that person that is receiving it, that is such a gift to them because again, they don't often realize the things that other people see in them. Um, but it is important to ask that and be brave enough to do that, right? Um, to just be brave enough to do that. But if you're not, be the one to initiate that at some gathering that you're at um, where there are people that you truly do value their opinion. That's one thing. You, may, you want to make sure they are the people that you value in your life, in your work, whatever the case may be. The other thing you can do is send it out via an email, which sounds kind of impersonal, but again, it takes a little bit of the emotion out of it that if people are responding to you, um, that they can do so with, uh, first of all, giving it a little thought, right? They're not put on the spot in the moment. They can think about it for a moment and they may recall things that you've done in your life or things that they were a part of that you don't even ever remember and yet it had a huge impact on them. And that, again, is also just such a gift. And we also need to remember to do that for others, right? So for other people in your life who have inspired you or even some little thing that they did um, or something that you appreciate about them. So remember to do that for people in your life, whether that's a family member or a team member or a neighbor or whatever the case may be, just to write a little note to say, hey, I noticed this today and thank you so much for that. Or I noticed you, I noticed you pushed the shopping cart back in the store. You know, sometimes those little things that people just do that they don't think nobody else ever sees. And when they realize that people do notice those things, it makes a really huge difference in their life. So. While we want to also be on the receiving end and we want to be open to receiving that, right? We, because the other thing is if we're open to receiving that, people are much more likely to give us that feedback than if we're really closed off to it and like, oh, I don't really want to know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have to be open. But then yeah. also to be open to providing that feedback to others. Yeah, that's, that's actually a really good exercise and a really good really good idea um to do that and i suppose also you could also look back at what what did you enjoy doing when you were younger yes mm -hmm. absolutely yeah what are the things you enjoyed doing when you were young that brought yeah that brought you happiness and joy and while they might seem like childish things they are still things that you can incorporate into what you do today and maybe it's swinging on a swing set and maybe that's not going to be your job, right? But maybe it's something that you still can incorporate in your day to day. Maybe it's with your own children or maybe it's with neighborhood kids or maybe you volunteer at a school um, or maybe you're a preschool teacher. So there's always ways that you can think about to incorporate that into your life, rather that's um, that you actually doing it like this is your career now rather you invest in it invest in others maybe you are giving to a charity or giving to an educational cause or purpose that um, promotes that or teaches that or maybe you're just visioning that maybe that's part of your meditation and your daily prayer so there's always a way that you can get that into whatever you do in your life. Yeah, that's, that, that is, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, these are, these are really great, um, you know, tips that, that you can use um, mm -hmm. in, in your personal life to try and get an understanding of, of, who, of who you really are and, and what, what talents and skills that, that you've actually, that you've actually got. I mean, do you find that it's, mainly the same type of people that come to you that have the same issues or is it a variety of things? Well, that's a very interesting question because I, I say I typically work with women and a few brave men. And I say that because it's typically the feminine energy piece that um, 
that I work with. Um, I work, when I work in corporate, it's clearly masculine and feminine and knowing when to use both of those. Uh, in my coaching, it's more, I, it's more towards the feminine energy side, not always females because we all have both of those energies within us, right? Yeah. Um, but it tends to be more that energy where we're a little more um, uh, considering, right? Um, not as, when, when you're in the masculine energy, you're more moving ahead, you're more ready to do that, and you're more um, focused on that. We're in the feminine energy, doesn't mean we're not focused, but it means maybe we're um, a little uh, more, um, nebulous in that. So I tend to work with either people who are early on in their career, they don't quite know what they want to do or where they're going, or people who have been in their career for quite some time, and they feel like maybe they've reached a plateau, and they don't really know what to do next. Or people like myself late in their career, they really enjoy their career, but there's just something more, right? We know that there's something more that either we want to leave um, as a legacy or something more that we are intended to do in this world. So those are kind of three really main categories, I guess, of people that I work with a lot. That encompasses, to say that though, encompasses all different areas, right? It might yeah. be somebody who's looking at a career change. It might be somebody who's looking at a, a location, a physical move. It might be somebody who's looking at a new relationship or a relationship that's just ended through death or divorce or separation. It might be um, uh, somebody who's empty nested. Um, all of it can be happen in any of those areas. And for any of those reasons that we have those things happen in our lives. And it's not always just a one time thing. Sometimes those little things build up to feeling a little dis-ease, unease. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was the, what's the main catalyst for you, you know, to suddenly go, go to co to start being a coach? Yeah. Well, and I, mine is sort of that wasn't suddenly a big thing. Right. So, um, I had 30 plus years in traditional healthcare. Um, I, uh, managed clinics and family medicine, family medicine residency programs, uh, was the COO. I was actually the first female COO in that program. Um, yeah, so, well, um, so, you know, I had some of those milestones in my life. And then um, my children had all graduated college and gone off to different areas of the country. And, you know, um, then I came across and I'd gone back and gotten my master's and then came across this life coaching thing. And I'm like, trying to convince all these people in my life, like, you need to go do this. This is really awesome. This is really cool. And uh, because I feel as a leader, that's a lot of what we do anyway, is we coach, right? Um, we coach the people who report to us. We mentor them. All of those things that, um, and mentoring and coaching are different. Um, and I feel people need both in their lives. But um, so I try to convince several people in my life that they needed to go do this because I felt it would fit great with what they were doing, right? And everyone kept saying, no, you need to do this. You need to do this. And I probably am like, uh, again, are there people in our life telling us things, right? <laughs> the, the light bulb. Okay, I'm going to do this. And so I got uh, certified as a life coach and then uh, did that sort of simultaneously for a couple of years with corporate. And then just decided that was really what I needed to be doing. And that was the part I liked the best of what I did. And so um, for I felt I could have the biggest impact with people and the biggest impact for change. So that's what I did. Excellent. So, so again, it's kind of like you, you, you've done, done what you teach, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, 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 you know, you, you got the information from people and you actually took action on it. Absolutely. Right. And that's the standing in the power piece. Right. So of our triangle of our living authentically, of being aligned with our purpose and acknowledging and standing in the power to say, I, I can do this. Right. I mean, I did. I will be honest. I had people say, why would you want to do that at this point in your life and go do something totally different? Why would you want to start your own business? You know, why don't you just why don't you just wait it out? And, you know, and I'm like, I, I can't just wait my life out. I have the ability, I have the power 
I can do this. I, it is within my power to say yes to this. It is not within my power to respond to other people who say no. Now, I had a really good supportive close family, close knit people in my close group that said, oh, you absolutely should go do this. But there were still other people that if I listened to them and acknowledged that, then that was not what I would have done. But instead, you have to listen to the people who are supporting you, the people, again, who's, who you truly value, and listen to your own inner voice. You have everything you already need within you, and you need to acknowledge that. I have this. I am good at this. I have done this. I am the person people come to. I just want to take it to the next level. And I absolutely can. So just acknowledging and standing in that power is really the third piece of coming to live your abundant life. Yeah, and I, I, I'd say that's probably going to be the most hardest part of it. It often is. It often is. Because we cast ourselves so often the way others see us, the way we grew up. You know, if you were, you know, the oldest in the family, the youngest in the family, if you're the peacekeeper in the middle, whatever it is, you know, you grow up with some of those things attached to you. And um, so realizing that they aren't necessarily you or who you are or who you want to be or who you can be, right? Um, listening to those around you, maybe um, that that's not a theme. That's not a job that, that women do, right? Yeah. You know, um, being a welder, that's not a job. That's not a job for women, or being a, a construction supervisor, that's not a job for women. That's, you know, that's, uh, so listening to that um, is not what you want to do. You need to listen to your own st strength and the own, your own, that own quiet voice that you have within you. And then surround yourself with the team that you need to get you to where you're going to be, who you need yeah. to be. Yeah, and, and I think that is, that's, that is the other important thing, is it to surround yourself with people that are going to be supportive with what you're going to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, we go back to that doesn't mean that people in your life, maybe family members, if they're not supportive, that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to cut them out altogether. But it does mean that you are not listening to them chirping in your ear, you're not taking them on a consistent basis, you know, you can still set boundaries and say, thank you, I appreciate that, but I'm doing this anyway, right? Um, or thank you, uh, but I'm not, I can't do that today. Um, and it's okay to say, you know, this is not, I'm, feel, I'm not feeling it today, so let's just take a break from that. It's okay to do that. It doesn't mean you have to entirely cut them out of your life. It just means you have to set good boundaries and then you have to surround yourself with those people who are doing what you do, who do support what you do. And I always say there are certain people, you have to have a cheerleader in your life, somebody who's like the rah-rah person, but you also have to have somebody who is a mentor, right? Somebody who is there that has is maybe walking alongside you, um, helping you with those things. You need an advocate, somebody who's out there in the community that is supporting you and telling about you to other people, how great you are, the advocate, and you need a coach. You need somebody who is there, who is there strictly for you without another agenda that is truly building what you have within you. Any or all of those people may be people that you already have in your life, but you need to be very intentional about um, identifying them as that. Or they may be people that you pay to do that. There are paid mentors. There are paid coaches. There are paid. So there may be people that you pay to do that, or they may be just people that are in your life. But just be really intentional about that and surrounding yourself with them. Yeah, yeah, de def definitely surrounding yourself with the right people. And I think when you start going down um, the path that you're meant to be going, when you actually start going, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm going, you automatically start attracting those people into your life anyway. Yes, yes right? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you do. You attract what you need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, once you start, it all starts um, it all starts coming in. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's quite, as you said at the beginning, you know, when people think of abundance, they automatically think of money um, and material things rather than, you know, emotional abundance and and, mm -hmm. and things like that and i th think that comes a lot from 
get our <laughs> questions, children from people mm -hmm. around us, from media and 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 things and things like that, that kind of like take away our, our own autonomy, if you kind of like our own way of thinking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right. It's all of those kind of baggage that we come with, I guess, right? That we, yeah, that's a very good point yeah. about that. Yeah. So. If we were, um, you know, we're we're um, we're 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 looking looking at our own language, our language of ourselves, and we're looking at going to the next step. Do we need to have, you know, clarity and know exactly what it is, or can we think we know what it is? Well, that's a really good question, Ray. And if you wait until you clearly know what everything is, I fully believe you'll never get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> that we have to have, there has to be a point that we step out in faith, in um, belief, in whatever you want to call it. There has to be a point that we take a risk, that we can't wait until we know it all or until it's perfect, because that day never really happens. Um, and something will come along and either push you into it or change if you don't make the decision to change yourself. So yeah. there's that, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the picture. So you, we're in our comfort zone here. And then the next circle out is fear. And the next circle out is growth. So you can't get to this growth circle without walking through that fear circle. And so I always love to use that uh, when I'm working with people that are really ask, getting to asking that question, right? Oh, I really, you know, I've done this for so long and I just, I know what I'm doing, right? I know what I'm doing in this job or in this relationship or in this, you know, I know everything's at in this house or whatever it is, you know, we all grew up here. We all, whatever it is. And that's great if that's still serving you. If it's no longer serving you, which is probably why you're questioning it, right? If it was, you wouldn't be questioning if it was, then don't wait for it to be perfect because it's not going to be. You have to step into that fear zone. You have to take that little step before you can get to growth. It's going to be scary. It's going to be hard. Nobody said it would be easy. If it is, then you need to dream bigger, right? You need to <laughs> yeah, to totally, totally. Yeah. Step. It's easy. Forget it. Something bigger. <laughs> That's right. Go a little farther, whatever. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, well, that's that's absolutely perfect. So, as you know, I do guided meditations and angel oracle card readings, and each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like me to um, do a mini guided meditation for themselves and those watching, or whether they would like me to pull um, an oracle card. So, Susan, what would you like me to do? That is such a hard choice to make, Gray. But since uh, since I'm also certified in mindfulness and I love meditation, I meditate every day. I think I'm going to go with that today. Um, I really, and I've listened to a couple of your other podcasts, so I love what you do, and I'm really excited to hear what you have for us today. Okay. Well, what I'm also going to do, I'm also going to do a card as well, and we'll actually use that card as the basis for the meditation. Oh, awesome! That is a wonderful way. See, it's a win-win. <laughs> okay, you get both. So, yes, it's an abundance you? mindset. You can have it all. You can indeed. So what does Susan and everyone watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Okay, so what have we got? Okay, so close your eyes. And as you do so, take a deep breath in. And on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be in this space. Take another deep breath in and on the out breath, just release everything that doesn't need to be here. And just allow yourself to start to relax. Think about relaxing your whole body. Think about relaxing your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, all the way down your arms to your fingertips. And as you do, just see, feel, imagine or know a beautiful golden light above your head. A beautiful golden light of peace and relaxation. And just allow this beautiful golden light to move down into your aura. 
down into your physical body and just feel this beautiful golden light relaxing every single part of your body. And as it does, you feel the whole of your head start to relax as that relaxation moves down to your brow, down to your temples, down to your eyes, down to your ears, that relaxation moving down to your nose, your cheeks, your mouth and your jaw, all the way down as you feel your neck muscles start to relax, feel your shoulder muscles start to relax, so warm and relaxed. As this beautiful golden relaxing light moves down into your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands and your fingers. And this beautiful relaxing energy moves into your upper body and you feel all your chest muscles start to relax, all your stomach muscles relax the whole of your back relax as this relaxation moves down into your hips, your pelvis, your buttocks sinking you deeper down where you are sitting, as this relaxation moves down into your thighs, your knees, your shins, your calves, your heels, your ankles, your feet and your toes. Your whole body is just so relaxed. And I want you now to use your imagination. See, feel, imagine or know yourself outside a beautiful country manor. A big country house with acres of ground around it. And in front of you there are some steps some steps leading down into a little courtyard and in a moment you're going to walk down these steps from five to one each descending number relaxing you more and more so let's walk down those stairs now five going deeper down the stairs four deeper down the stairs three deeper down the stairs two, all the way down the stairs one and you take a step off that bottom step into a beautiful courtyard and in this courtyard there's a beautiful fruit tree abundant with fruit at the moment and the sun is shining down warming your skin and there are pots of abundant flowers just everywhere. And there's a gentle breeze and you can hear the abundance of birds, of insects. And it feels so beautiful, so peaceful, so abundant here. And you might even take some fruit of the tree and just eat it and as you bite into it you taste the sweetness of that fruit and it just feels so wonderful and you walk through this courtyard and as you do you can hear a sound it's like a call something is calling you so you allow this sound to draw you to it and you go closer and closer to a beautiful wooden gate, a beautiful arched gate with a beautiful wooden door. And as you get closer, the sound outside, it just gets louder and louder. You're being called. You're being called to do something. What is it you're being called to do? In a moment you're going to open that door, that gate and step through, step through into what you need to do now, 
what is the what is it right now for you to do the timing is so right for you to do it so just open that gate step right through and answer that call the time is now for you to take those steps and you see a beautiful golden path that's leading you to answering that call. So I'll leave you for a moment or two just following that path. Just follow that path. And in a moment you're going to come to the end of that path and you're going to see exactly what you should be doing now. What is it you're being called to do? And I'll just leave you for a moment to connect and get that energy and any information that you need. Just allow that information to come to you in whichever form, whether pictures, words, sounds, colours or knowing. Maybe it's just a feeling. Now that you've got that information, just allow it to fill you up completely. Connect to the energy of that information and allow it to penetrate into every single cell of your body, every muscle of your body, totally ingrained within yourself. And now you start walking back along that golden path. And as you walk back along that golden path, you see beautiful flowers that you may not have noticed before. And there's a beautiful deer there just standing, watching you, and you can feel the beautiful, peaceful energy knowing that you've made the right decisions. You've got the answers that you need. And before you know it, you're back at that gate. And you step back in and find yourself in that courtyard again. And maybe you might want to take some more fruit off that tree. Just taste that sweetness as you bite into it. And maybe the juice runs down your chin. You feel so abundant, so alive, so full of wisdom and knowledge. And in a moment, I'm going to count you up the stairs from one to five. Each ascending number bringing you back to the present, to the here and now. Remembering everything that you've learned. 
So if you're ready now, let's start walking up the stairs. One, coming further up the stairs. Two, further up the stairs. Three, remembering everything. Further up the stairs. Four, coming back into your body. Further up the stairs. Five, all the way back. Fully back, fully present in the here and now. Wiggle, move. Just make sure you are fully back. And open your eyes when you are ready. And welcome back. That was lovely. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. Well, the card that came out, which really ties in with what you've been talking about, is answering the call. The time is now. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. The universe knows what we need. It always has our back. Yes. Absolutely, it it it, to- it totally does. You know, and please do let us know in the comments if you're happy to share. You know, what 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 call are you being? You know, call are you being um, yes. answering to? Um, and and that you know, because we, we'd love we'd love to hear. Absolutely, um, yeah, I'd love what to about hear. You, what about you, Susan? What did you get? If you oh. want to share, you don't have to. <laughs> No, that's that's fine. Um, first of all, just let me say thank you. That was such a lovely, um, just visual picture of of the uh, the walk in the garden. So thank you so much for that. Um, and yeah, just walking that path and feeling um, called to working with the abundance of others and working with um, that call for them um, to help to raise up the energy. I always feel like. Um, we can't raise up our own energy and levels without raising up all of those around us. So our job really is to make sure that we are living our highest and best life so that all of those around us can also live their highest and best life. Absolutely. Beautiful, perfect words to finish with. So thank you so, so much for for those. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found insightful, as I know I definitely have. So, Susan, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Oh, absolutely. Well, um, I will put um, my scheduling link in the the, uh, message or comments below. But also, uh, you can find me. I keep it really simple. SusanEricksonCoaching.com is my website. SusanEricksonCoaching at gmail.com is my um, email. Um, I have a summit coming up later this month, which is holistic, being W-H-O-L, just like abundance, the whole person with many speakers. So um, uh, I invite you to that. It's totally free. So I'd love to have you join us with that as well. But yeah, just reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with, with any of you. And again, Ray, thank you so much for your time today and for this wonderful conversation and opportunity. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Um, It's been absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And of course, anyone who's watching this, you know, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need some guidance in finding the meaning of your life and getting clear on your path, your, you know, where your spiritual journey wants to take you, then I would love to be that guide for you. So please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free clarity video call to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts. And thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe as every subscribe helps. And hit that bell button to be notified of when the show goes live or when I post new guided meditations. And I look forward to seeing you all same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye. Thank you.